thank you, and um, it's good to have you all here today. Um, my name is George Proakis. I am the city manager here in Watertown, so I want to take a moment here to welcome everyone to Watertown. First of all, to welcome the governor and lieutenant governor to Watertown. It's good to also be here today with our state delegation, members of our city council, um, members of our city staff, members of the press, and, and, and all of you who have come to join us here today. Um, just want to uh, take a moment to, uh, to, to share a bit about why we're here in Watertown today. Um, and Watertown has been a leader in climate mitigation and resilience. Um, we built what I believe to be the, the, the most aggressive and determined climate action plan in the state. We are determined to implement it step by step. Um, we were the first community in the Commonwealth who adopted the specialized stretch energy code. Um, and um, we continue to work to try to address climate mitigation and climate resilience as best we can. Um, and of course, we've been welcoming creative companies like Via Separations to Watertown. Um, I'm thrilled to welcome Governor and Lieutenant Governor to Watertown today as we take a moment to highlight the economic benefits of the climate tech industry in Massachusetts, and as we share the significant economic benefits of a dedicated program like the Governor's proposed climate tech initiative. Um, I want to share a comparable success story, which is our story here in Watertown. Um, since Governor Patrick implemented the Life Science Initiative in 2008, Watertown has become home to a thriving cluster of biotechnology companies, uh, over 2.2 million square feet of life science space, um, built or under construction here in Watertown with over 70 individual biotech companies, um, which are bringing a substantial benefit to the Massachusetts economy. A significant cluster that employs many residents of Watertown and throughout the Commonwealth, um, and definitely a lot of high paying um, and high quality jobs. Um, this economic engine, I do have to note, has also helped our local bottom line, allowing us to build a state-of-the-art new high school and three elementary schools without a debt exclusion because of the economic growth in our commercial sector here in Washington. So my hope is that we don't stop there, that we keep on going, that we um, are able to uh, find benefits above and beyond that. And I've already seen the benefits of the climate tech sector and the opportunity we have in Massachusetts to become a global leader in this emerging industry. Um, many people know that before I was here as city manager, I worked at the planning and development team in Somerville, where I had the opportunity to work with Emily Reichert and the team at Greentown Labs to move and grow the largest climate tech startup in North America to Massachusetts. Um, and um, they have been an amazing organization for Somerville and for Massachusetts. Um, and now with the work towards the climate tech initiative, I look forward to working with Governor Healy to grow a climate tech innovation industry in Watertown and do our part to help the Commonwealth become a leader in this emerging industry. So I'm thrilled today to welcome all of you, but particularly to welcome Governor Healy um, to share more about the benefits of the climate tech industry to our Commonwealth. So thank you. Ah, well, good morning, everyone. And thank you so much to our fantastic uh, City Manager Paracas. Thank you for being here today, um, joined, of course, by members of Watertown City Council and so many from Watertown. Thank you for such a warm welcome today. I'm also the, delighted to be joined by terrific partners in the legislature who over the years have continued to fund and implement important uh, initiatives. And, and we're delighted to be joined by Senator Will Brownsberger, Representative Steve Owens, and also our representative and chair of the Committee on Telecommunications and Utilities and Energy, Jeff Roy. So thank you all of you. <laughs> also joining us, Dr. Mark Melnick, who is the Director of Economic and Public Policy Research at the UMass Donahue Institute, who will talk in just a little bit. <laughs> and also uh, members of our team, Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll, Secretary of Economic Development Yvonne Howe, Climate Chief Melissa Hoffer, CEO of the Clean Energy Center, Emily Reichert, Under Secretary of Energy, Mike Judge. So thank you team for being here as well. I also want to welcome Admiral Francis. Thank you for coming up from uh, the President of Mass Maritime um, for being here with us this morning and members of your team. Brooke Thompson of AIM, J.D. Chesloff of the Business Roundtable, so many leaders and partners in this room. And partnership, collaboration is really what today is all about. 
Um, also, Joe Curtitone, thank you from New England CC. Thank you for all that you do. We were a little late in getting, I know you're warm and it's uh, yeah, close, but um, look, we wanted to take the time to actually take in all that is happening here at Via Separations. And I want to begin by thanking Shreya DeVay and her team um, for the opportunity to both see what's possible and to be able to talk a little bit today about their story. Because it is their story that we are proposing in the Mass Leads Act, this investment in climate technology. They are the example and they are the proof that Massachusetts can be the global hub for climate technology. In the same way that we owned and dominated life sciences because of investments made by the state years ago, in the same way, we can do that in climate technology. And having talked to these founders, having talked to the actual professor who worked with then students who became founders at MIT, Jeff, thank you, it's so clear to me that there's no other place in the country or, frankly, on the planet better situated to own and dominate and drive climate technology for the betterment of the planet and certainly as a huge opportunity for economic growth and development for our state. So thank you so much, Shreya, to you and to the teams. Um, decarbonizing materials that go into goods and products that we use every day, that's what these guys have figured out a way to do. And it's essential to the future of our planet and also for our economy. And we're just so proud to have you right here in our state and right here in Watertown. Via Separations tells the story of Massachusetts' economic strength and of our even greater potential. It was spun out of doctoral research right here down the road at MIT. It was incubated down the road at Greentown Labs in Somerville, which is the largest incubator in all of North America. Investors included the Mass CEC as well as private firms. Remember right now, Massachusetts, we are number one in the country in venture capital per capita, okay? Number one in the country, and so much of that is going to and looking, wanting to go to private, uh, excuse me, um, investment in, cli in climate technology. In addition, there was federal funding through ARPA-E for a pub uh, pilot demonstration. And amazingly, in just a few years, since 2017, they've already got commercial applications and were recognized in the top 100 climate tech companies by Time Magazine's list in 2024. So that is really, really cool. It's amazing. Amazing, okay? And I didn't mention, but there's 60 employees here, and there are also um, operations happening elsewhere in Massachusetts showing what, what I've been talking about is this is an opportunity for us to really own this statewide in terms of a footprint. So this is the Massachusetts story that we want to grow, we want to multiply. It's why the Mass Leads Act, our economic development bill, calls for a historic investment in climate technology. We announced the Mass Leads Act just weeks ago at another climate tech firm, Form Energy in Somerville. Thank you, CEO Ted Wiley, for being here today and for the opportunity to be with you weeks ago. As I say, we have proven the model in life sciences. We know how to support innovation, and we have a willingness to tackle some of the world's most difficult problems and challenges and win. Climate tech is our next big historic mission, Massachusetts. Our ecosystem is world class. We have all the ingredients that we need to become the global innovation hub for the clean energy revolution. The Mass Leads Act will get us there with a $1.3 billion investment in this ecosystem. It includes capital for investors uh, for, and innovators to develop research and to commercialize it, tax credits to help companies grow, and workforce partnerships to develop talent. Now today, we wanted to share exciting and important news about the impact. The UMass Donahue Institute has studied this, and they have found 
that if you take the $1.3 billion investment in climate technology that we are proposing, we will see a return of $16.4 billion in economic activity over the next 10 years. $16.4 billion. That's a ROI of more than 12 to 1 for Massachusetts in 10 years. That's a really, really good bet and a really, really good investment. That's based on a few things. It includes $3.3 billion from our direct investment, another $13 billion of activity from the private and public funds that would follow. It's based on Mass CEC's historic track record of making smart investments and building strong partnerships in a community of innovators. It also helps attract additional funding and helps uh, startups turn into companies that are growing and hiring. And that's what we saw here today at Via Separations. The analysis also projects close to 6,700 new jobs in uh, the climate tech field. And it means jobs in science and technology. We're already hard at work investing K-12 in these places and vocational learning and career pathways. I announced in Carver a few weeks ago, we opened up a new clean energy pathway in our high schools. So, you know, that's important. It also means jobs in construction, uh, manufacturing, teachers, training, drivers, maintenance workers, um, a whole range. So look, this is an opportunity that we can't pass up. As I say, Massachusetts is uniquely positioned and we can't miss this opportunity. A month from today, I'll just put a plug in, June 3rd through 5th, we're going to host our first ever climate tech conference in Boston at MGM Music Hall in the House of Blues. We're going to bring together climate tech leaders from around the world. It's a place for people in industry and research to come together to talk, to learn, and to plan. Other states are competing hard, um, but I know that there's nothing like what we have here in Massachusetts when it comes to the potential and the possibility. So together, I want us to work to get it done, to pass the Mass Leads Act, and to uh, take us to the next level in this incredibly important field. I now want to invite Dr. Melnick from the Donahue Institute to share a little bit more about the really important uh, report that you are releasing today. Dr. Melnick, thank you. Hey, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Governor Healy. Uh, your staff instructed me to do, uh, my translation of it was do nerd stuff, but not too much, not too nerdy. So <laughs> we'll, we'll see how I do on this. And then the, the uh, uh, other one was uh, when I walked in, I said hi to JD and Brooke. I was like, I just snuck into this thing. So this is not <laughs> definitely a different group uh, that I'm normally with. But uh, it's a real honor to be here today and uh, with such a distinguished group of folks from the state, uh, state and local leaders, as well as the folks here at VIA. Um, my name is Mark Melanick. I'm the Director of Economic and Public Policy Research at the UMass Donahue Institute. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar, uh, my team at UMDI does a wide array of applied economic, demographic, and public policy research studies for clients in state government, municipal government, regional planning agencies, nonprofits, and so on. And one of the things we really specialize in are economic impact assessments, uh, where we estimate the direct and spin-off effects of different activities in the economy. These kinds of analyses consider the supply chain and trade flows that go on within the economy uh, and some of the spending relationships both between industries as well as consumer spending. By inputting direct knowledge of characteristics about an industry or an investment, uh, we can estimate both the direct uh, and spinoff effects of the activities in the economy. The more detail that we have, uh, the better the able we are to make declarative statements about what the potential impacts of, of uh, an investment would be. Uh, and we've done this kind of stuff for, you know, Mass Gaming Commission, for different industries around the state, um, for different private in, uh, companies, Treehouse Brewing, and so on. Um, for this study, my team worked closely with Emily Reichert's group over at Mass CEC to better understand the history of the catalyzing investments at uh, the Clean Energy Center. Um, you know, a lot of the, the things that go through the Clean Energy Center are targeted to early stage and startup businesses. Um, so there's a lot of catalyzing uh, investment that occurs from the, the private sector as well as from other forms of public funding, as well as what the different investments were planned for mass leads. Uh, we then made assumptions about investments in broad industry categories to make estimates regarding the supply chain spending and wages that would be associated with these investments. This generates the direct and spinoff effects in our analysis. As the governor stated, 
Our estimates show that the money invested and catalyzed in the climate tech elements of the bill would have a massive economic impact. Over a 10 year period, as the governor stated, we're estimating about 16.4 billion in acti new activity in the state and the creation of direct and spinoff jobs of about of nearly 7,000 in the state. Most of this employment would occur in things like construction, education, workforce training, manufacturing, transportation, and other elements of professional services. Uh, I encourage folks to uh, check out the report that is now live uh, for a bit more detail on the methods, results, limitations, and some of the caveats. Uh, in particular, it's important that this should be viewed at a high level as a preliminary analysis because we're really at the, um, the, the beginning of a legislative process right now um, that, that, that the folks of the state would need to go through. So of course, any changes in the bill would lead to changes in the economic impact. Uh, and then there's always unknowns in, the, in some of these things. Uh, most notably uh, is federal policy, uh, which could change depending on uh, leadership in the government. Uh, but also, and I think was an important challenge for state government in the policy world is, uh, in the policy world is uh, the available labor in Massachusetts. And I think that there's a number of big challenges in the state right now that meet each other in, in different places that all come back to uh, making Massachusetts an attractive place to live and work and being able to best uh, utilize the available labor that we have in the state. So uh, targeted investments around housing, targeted investments around workforce development, and making sure that we're able to attract and retain workers in the state as well as uh, optimize labor force participation for folks who are here in the state uh, already thinking about folks with criminal record or folks with disabilities, um, uh, veterans. These are all populations that participate in the labor market at a low level. Um, so with targeted investments in these populations, uh, we can unlock work opportunities in these really emergent fields that Massachusetts has always been a leader in. So. Uh, with that, um, I'll stop and turn the show over to uh, my favorite uh, Secretary of Economic Development ever, uh, Yvonne Howe. So. Thank you so much, Mark. And he, I'm his favorite because we're fellow nerds. We've done a lot. Of, this is our second event together today, uh, and we have done a lot of work together. So um, it is a tremendous honor and privilege to be here um, with all of you. And everyone who knows me knows I talk a lot about Team Massachusetts. This room is the best of Team Massachusetts. This is a superstar room. Um, we have the best leadership on Team Massachusetts, our captain. We have incredible teammates in our uh, cabinet and our colleagues in the other, uh, other secretariats. We have the best legislative partners, unbelievable. The best town leadership, thank you. And all of the best in terms of our startups, our investors, our quasi um, institutions like Mass Ventures, Mass Development, the Mass Clean Energy Center, um, and our incubators like Greentown Labs, and our associations. We have the best, best team. So we're so lucky to be here today, and I'm, I'm especially happy to be here today because of VIA separations. And Shreya and Jeff and Brett and I were talking about life in a startup. So my entire career up until this moment was in the private sector. Uh, very honored now in the last year and a couple months to be in state government, but I was in a startup very much like this, and we were talking about how the highs are very high and the lows are very low. And it is crazy being in a startup, especially when, like via separations, you're working on building something that no one's done before. And so to everyone at VIA Separations, we're so proud of you, all of your team. We're so grateful for you. We're so happy you chose Massachusetts. And we're excited to help you be a wildly successful global leader from here in our state. So thank you and congratulations to VIA. And we're especially happy because VIA Separations, as the governor and the town manager and, and Mark all mentioned, it exemplifies why the Mass Leads Act is so important. So it's called the Mass Leads Act because we in Massachusetts, we've led for a long time. We led with throwing the, the tea in the water and starting, you know, starting a revolution and starting the, the birth of our country. And we've led throughout time by inventing, by um, innovating, by solving big, hard, important problems that make the world a better place. And now is not the time to stop. We need this Mass Leads Act now to continue to support this incredible work. And VIA Separations exemplifies all of the things we care about. We lead by working on things that matter, fighting climate change. We have some of the, the, the most ambitious emissions targets, and we want, as a state, to lead in fighting climate change. But we're going to also lead by creating a ton of economic growth, by helping amazing startups coming out of universities, partnering with our ecosystem to build great companies, great jobs for every region of our state, for every type of background. 
And the other thing I'll mention that uh, we, you know, we haven't talked about, we lead by having the best leadership. And so Shreya and I were saying, if you look at the venture uh, statistics, it's pretty dire. I think in an average year, only about 10% of startups are founded by women CEOs. In Massachusetts, we're at 30% or so. And if you look at uh, the, the national statistics, venture startups, uh, the founders being people of color is very, very low. And here in Massachusetts, we're much better. So we lead in so many ways. So <laughs> So this is an amb this is an ambitious three and a half billion dollar uh, bill, but I'm an I'm an investor by background. A 12 to one return, I can't think of a better return. That's a pretty phenomenal um, amount of impact that we can have with this. So these are not costs; these are investments that we're going to make. And we're going to partner with our legislative uh, friends to get this passed. But we are so excited to continue to lead as a state on all these important topics and to celebrate amazing people like the separation. So thank you so much. And I'm now going to turn it to uh, turn it over to our awesome CEO of the Mass Clean Energy Center, Emily Riker. A big thank you to the Secretary and good morning everyone. Uh, my name is Emily Reichert and I'm the CEO of the Massachusetts Clean Energy Center and I have to say I am so excited to be at Ventures via Separations. I have watched this team grow from basically Brent and Jeff and Shreya to uh, 60 people today and it has just been an amazing journey. And so I'm just, uh, this is their brand new building and uh, it's, it's, it's just fantastic. So I want to thank uh, the town manager, uh, George Proakis, for welcoming them to Watertown. And it's so cool to see a company come from a laboratory at MIT and, and revitalize a mill building um, here in Watertown. So Via Separations is a climate tech success story. And it's amazing to see this company take off. And Mass CEC has been proud to support Via Separations over several years, several grant programs, and through our 2030 investment fund, where we're investing $5 million a year through 2030, really to support innovations related to climate change. As the governor said, uh, Massachusetts is already a top place for climate tech companies, like Via Separations, but our goal is to be the global hub, the place where innovators like Via Separations want to be. So I have to start by thanking Secretary Howe uh, for her incredibly thoughtful economic development plan, which has formed the blueprint for this Mass Leads Act, which is designed to make us that global hub. And of course, the vision of the Mass Leads Act wouldn't uh, be possible without our governor's vision and our lieutenant governor and all of our wonderful leadership in the climate tech space, like Chief Climate Chief Hopper, who I'm glad to have here with us today. We're also lucky to have legislative leadership, climate leaders in our legislator, legislature who are supporting Mass CEC. Thank you so much for uh, purporting uh, to the House of Representatives and specifically Chair Roy for supporting Mass CEC and the state budget. We are uh, so delighted to have the legislature as partners. So, the governor and the lieutenant governor understand that innovation is what we do best. It's a core part of our DNA here in the Commonwealth. And the innovative new technology at Via Separations is just one example. And their success is something that we are seeing not just here in Watertown, not just in Cambridge, not just in Somerville, but really across the Commonwealth. And that's really part of the governor's vision to create a climate corridor that impacts and has an economic benefit across our state. In fact, Mass CEC is supporting growing climate tech clusters in western Massachusetts, in central Massachusetts, greater Boston, and elsewhere across the state. And I've traveled through these regions, and pretty much all the entrepreneurs that I've met have told me the same thing, and that is that they want to stay here in our state. And that this is a special and unique environment and an ecosystem that they are proud to be a part of. And that's really what the Mass Leads Act is all about. It's about investing in the innovators that want to invest in Massachusetts. The Mass Leads Act would provide Mass CEC with the resources we need to help these companies to grow and to scale and to succeed here. And their success means good paying jobs, revitalized local economies, 
and the climate solutions that are going to help us meet our climate goals here in Massachusetts, but will also inspire national and international efforts to combat climate change. The Mass Leads Act will allow Mass CEC to build programs to support the scale up of company development, providing funding for capital investment and tax incentives, essential economic development tools focused specifically on supporting and growing climate tech companies, which we don't have access to today. Like the Life Sciences Initiative established back in 2008, which was such a success, we have the essential ingredients already here in place to build this climate tech economy. Incredible academic institutions, an active venture community, and strong startup ecosystem across the board we have supportive policy that is going to help us lead the way in this space. That's why, as you heard from the governor, climate tech is poised to be the next economic growth engine for the Commonwealth. And Massachusetts is poised to lead and to become the climate innovation lab for the world. I want to thank you for allowing me to say a few words this morning, and it is now my great pleasure to introduce the CEO of Via Separations, Shreya Davi. Thank you. Um, on behalf of the entire VIA family, I am so thrilled to host Governor Healy, her team, and all the other climate champions here today. Where is here? Well, here I think of is the tough tech community and the climate tech ecosystem that is only possible in Massachusetts. Here is deep ties to academic institutions, one of which had a very important role to play in our founding story. Here is 64 Pleasant Street in Watertown, Mass, home to more than 50 Massachusetts-based employees. Um, in 1865, this building was not just any mill, it was a paper mill, and it was powered by our very own Charles River. Today, it's the home of our company to innovation powered by computer chips, driving the electrification of the industrial sector, beginning with paper mills. Thank you. We have just completed the construction of our first-of-a-kind facility at a paper mill. This is no longer science fiction. This is no longer hope or promise. This is commercial today, and we're eradicating emissions in the industrial sector this year in 2024. Thank you. Here is the robust community of investors and resources from Prime Impact Fund, Greentown Labs, the Engine Accelerator and Ventures, the Mass Clean Energy Center, the folks from Columbia and Berkeley and TRIA and uh, Leggett who get, got us into this space physically here, who can help take teams like ours from idea all the way to impact. Our first dollar in the door was from Mass CEC. It was a grant, a catalyst program. And the Mass CEC internship is by far my favorite best kept secret of the state. Here is Massachusetts, where I was born and raised, where my husband and I, who's here today, have chosen to raise our family, educate our children, and dedicate our careers to changing the world, both of us in the climate tech ecosystem. Massachusetts has long been a hub for innovation and the reason why we will continue to grow via here. But as much as I might think it's so, Massachusetts is not the center of the universe. Uh, we were recently selected for a fairly competitive, uh, nearly $50 million industrial decarbonization award from the Office of Clean Energy Demonstrations at the Department of Energy. That will support a facility in Louisiana. From there, we expand to Georgia, South Carolina, Arkansas, and beyond. And as we've heard today, the administration's proposed investment has demo demonstrable economic returns in Massachusetts, but companies like ours will expand that impact throughout the country, creating and retaining jobs that are not in regions that are not traditionally considered tech hubs, but have amazing things to offer. We are proud to be amb ambassadors for the Massachusetts climate tech ecosystem, solving the biggest challenges, the only way we in Massachusetts know how, with humility and resilience. So with that, I'd like to welcome Governor Healy back to the stage. Thank you for being here.
thank you, thank you so much, Rhea. Um, and thank you all at, at Via Separations. It was awesome. Um, we're happy to take any questions on topic at this time. Well, that's a work in progress right now, and we're in the middle of a legislative session. There are a lot of important things that are <laughs> happening. We filed an important housing bill because one of the things you heard today, particularly from the Donahue Institute, again, affirming one of the keys to unlocking, securing, retaining talent, the human workforce that we need in this state, is housing. And so that's really important. We're focused on that. And this bill is also what we're really focused on, this Mass Leads Act. Um, you know, I think the, the, the proof is in the numbers and in the studies. It's also in the very real examples of what we're seeing here today. And I don't know about you, but <coughs> I think it's pretty cool that this building that was a paper mill back in the 1860s, part of the great Massachusetts Industrial Revolution, is now home to a company that is developing and implementing a technology in paper mills in Canada and around the world that will help those paper mills decarbonize their manufacturing process and also, as we learned, save those companies a lot of money with a much more effective, efficient technology. And so you look at what VIA Separations has done, and it's an example of why this kind of investment is so, so important. And one of the phrases I, I learned from Jeff, who is a professor at MIT and had both Brett and Treya as students just a few years ago. It's amazing how young they are and everything that they've done in just a short amount of time. I talk a lot about lab to fab, something we want to build here in Massachusetts, where you know the research is happening in close proximity to actual places that are making the stuff, and you can go back and forth and test it. Jeff, and here's an example of what, we, what we're talking about, what we're talking about Massachusetts in our DNA of innovation. Jeff talks about lab to planet, because the work that's being done, the technology that's being developed here is about having an impact on the planet, on the world. And that is something about this state, and it's why I'll do everything I can to, uh, to work to see the Mass Leads Act p bill pass because I think it's that that important to our to uh, Massachusetts now and especially for generations to come. Great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And again, uh, many thanks to Via Separations. Thank you.